Hello tarot people. So I'm going to share with you a little new project that I'm working on, um, which is combining tarot energies from the major arcana. Today I'm going to talk about death and the moon. Um, and what might happen if you combined two cards together. So it's an idea that I've been percolating since I finished the, the painted tarot in 2018. So for three years I've been thinking about this idea and when I finished the tarot deck I had this this almost like a vision of all of them getting together and um, probably in relief that they didn't have to be painted anymore by me. <laughs> but they all got together and they had a party and so I had this idea that they, they sort of existed, you know, and I suppose tarot people would agree that the energies do exist, they exist. Uh, somewhere and so I thought well at parties you know friendships are formed relationships are formed things are discussed you know and, and what would happen as a result of these connections so I'm just going to work with the major arcana and my idea is to produce 10 paintings um, with um, 10 backstories so before I could do the paintings, and this is often a way that I work, before I can do a painting, I have to think about the story that goes along with the painting or behind the painting. Or um, My work is often very much related to stories and uh, history and lots of, lots of things coming together, as well as the observational stuff that goes with painting the figure. But often it's, 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 a, it's a big mixture of things. It's a mashup of a story, a person I've seen, a, a scene from history, a memory, a dream. So this is a real mashup of all of those ideas. But specifically, it's about what would happen if certain energies got together in the tarot. So I'm going to talk about this this one that I've done, which is um, Death and the Moon. So you can see Death has got a black hummingbird. She's a Victorian lady. She's, um, you know, I think I've said before about Death that the... Uh, the Victorians were really good at death. They had a really wonderful sense of, um, you know, the black dress, the seance, the uh, the, the increase in, in popularity of uh, parapsychology. Everything around the Victorian era was, was very, you know, and obviously in those days people died a lot younger and so death was all around. So... I think I've I've really got into this full on gothic uh, Victorian lady in my death card, <clears throat> and the moon is a young woman um, against a full moon, and she's she's neither young nor old, and and so in my in my depictions of all of the tarot people, they're neither young nor old, and so they kind of already they travel between this sort of time zone of, you know, are they young, are they old, you know, what's um, what's going on there, so. I feel like I've left a lot of gaps to explore further and um, and I think this is what's happening now. So I'm going to show you a couple of the sketches that I've done. So here we go. Um, I think on Instagram maybe you might have seen them if you've seen me on Instagram. So um, I've started off doing um, death here and the moon here just to kind of familiarise myself with, with where I was. And then I've put them together and there's an idea that I've got that death and the moon would meet in, um, in a city such as Edinburgh, which is where I live. And I recently went on a trip down to Mary King's Close. I don't know if any of you have ever been down. It's a, it's a very well preserved uh, street underneath the Royal Mile in Edinburgh and a really interesting place to go. And very much associated with stories of of the time, which were real and true, and then other people have have uh, begged the question of whether there are still some energies down there. It's a fascinating place to go. So I'm going to read you an extract from the story that I wrote, which is really the backstory to this painting. When it comes, it hasn't come yet, but the painting is already forming in my mind. But the backstory is. Um, in some ways just as important so I'm going to share that with you and I hope you like it this is about halfway through death and the moon have met um, they are 
realizing that the new energy has to come through and it's painful for them. So in a lot of the backstories that I've written uh, so far, the tarot cards know that they're tarot cards. They know that they're used by the humans. Some of them are nice, some of them are not nice. Um, I've already done backstories for the devil and the lovers and uh, who else? The tower and the high priestess. So let me know if you like it. And um, yeah, here's a little extract, just a few minutes extract of the backstory that I've written to go with death and the moon fusion. Uh, the new energy has a name. I'm not going to tell you that yet, <laughs> but I will uh, as we go forward. Okay, so this is about halfway through. Death and the moon had made a pact long ago that meant they would never be together, despite the incredible pull of tides that linked them constantly. Each had an important job to do, and thousands of people relied on them every single day. It was simply impossible. But written deep into this ancient pact was a chink of chance that one day the conditions would be right for them to come together and create the new energy both of them desired. Neither moon nor death knew when this would be or how it would come to pass, but here they were, together at last, in perfect unity. You know what this means, death said to moon. I do, said moon. The two women looked into each other's eyes, darkness and light exploding all around them. But what about the child, said death. She's so young. She will go down in history, moon replied, remembered forever, written about thought about. She will always be alive. And her mother? Asked Death, her black eyes filling with tears. She will forget, in time, said Moon, her face calm, but her silver heart betraying her as it noiselessly split into shards of glass somewhere in heaven. Moon had to steady herself as she felt the tears of a million mothers losing a million children. Annie woke up suddenly, her mother was still asleep beside her, and it was unclear whether it was night or day. She disentangled herself from her mother's sleepy embrace, and going to the window, she saw the Royal Mile was empty, and yet the bells of St Giles Cathedral were ringing out as if it were a special occasion. So, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you like it. Um, it's very much early stages, but... Um, the end result will hopefully be 10 paintings with 10 backstories and 10 new energies. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening and see you next time.